During this video, I'd like to discuss eye behavior. Eye behavior is part of communication that is very important. You can tell a person how you feel and what you're thinking by using your eyes. Or you could also tell about the person you're talking to, how they're feeling, if they're paying attention to you, or if you may wonder if they're telling the truth or not. Eye behavior has three main things. First thing eye behavior does is it gives you salience. Salience is letting a person know that you want to be noticed. By looking at a person, you may show that you're interested in being seen and they may notice you. If you don't look at the person, you won't get that eye contact and they may not notice you. That's where the salience comes from. The second part of eye behavior is to stimulate arousal. You'll stimulate arousal both positive or negative depending on how the person reacts or how the eye contact is. Giving a person mean look will give negative feedback and giving a person a nice smile and high eyebrows may give another positive reaction. Another part of eye contact and eye behavior is involvement. If you want to be involved with the person or involved in a situation, you want to make sure that you have good eye contact. If you're staring at the floor while there's a meeting going on, people are going to think that you're not wanting to be involved in the communication. Now on the other hand, if you're making eye contact with the, with the group from one person to the next while they're speaking, you'll be more involved and people will want your feedback more often rather than you just not paying attention. While you may have been paying attention, you didn't communicate them that you had because you were staring at the floor or maybe even your phone. Another part of involvement is when you're walking through the mall or a public sp space and you look at a person, when you make eye contact, you're right at that point involved with them. You can choose to avert your gaze or you can choose to smile and nod. In our culture, most of the time, we'll smile at the person and nod. This is something that occurs in an elevator and you smile and nod and you acknowledge their existence then you may look away and avert your gaze. More friendly people may talk about the weather or something else but usually you avert your gaze. Eye behavior is also used for four other things. Eye behavior is used to establish relationships. Relationships that are established start from eye contact. If you don't create eye contact with a person, it is very unlikely that you're going to be able to have a relationship with them. There may be a few exceptions to the rules. For instance, if you have a relationship on the internet with somebody, whether romantic or not, you may not have eye contact with them. Though, once you do meet them, if you do meet them, in person to person, you'll need to make eye contact in order to have a good relationship. Eye contact also forces people to inter interact with each other. When a person looks at each other, like we spoke about on the last slide, eye contact forces you to react. You can either look at them and smile, look at them and look away, which is still interaction as you averted your eyes, or you can look at a person and start a conversation. Eye contact forces people to interact with each other no matter if they want to or not. Eye behavior also expresses our emotions. At the beginning of the video, we spoke about this a little bit, but when you look into a person's eyes, you can at times tell how they are feeling, whether they want you to feel it or not. For instance, if a person's been crying, this is a very good indicator that a person's sad. Most everybody can tell when a person's been crying because either Ed's, their eyes are wet from tears running down their face or their eyes are tired looking like they've been crying a lot, makeup being smeared, red eyes, or even eyes that are looking down may even show that a person is sad. Some indicators 
in eye behavior that a person is happy is wide-eyed, looking around, being interested, or other things similar to that. Eye contact also regulates communication. When a person is communicating with somebody, or even in a meeting, people use eye contact to regulate whose turn it is to speak. For instance, if I'm speaking to somebody and I don't want to pay attention to them and I want them to go away, I will avert my eyes and look towards the wall or the floor. If I'm running out of time, I may look at my watch. That may indicate to a person that I either don't have time or I don't want to speak to them. When I'm looking away, it may tell them that I'm not interested in talking to them or what they're talking about. Now, on the other hand, if I keep eye contact with the person while they're speaking to the amount of eye contact that is culturally accepted, the person may continue to speak about that and know that I'm interested in what they're speaking about or, late, or at least think that I'm interested in what they're speaking about. During a meeting, regulating communication, if I were to be speaking to a person in a meeting, and then when they're done talking, I'll move my eyes to another person, that may indicate that I'd like to know their feedback. Now, eye contact is also a good regulate communication if I'm holding a meeting. For instance, if I'm holding a meeting with employees or with children, for instance, I may be speaking to the group. I'll move my eyes from person to person while I'm talking to them to get their attention. Now, if there's a time where two kids are goofing off or two people are goofing off, they don't have to be kids, especially in group meetings, simply looking over at the people quickly and holding my gaze for a couple of seconds more than I normally do, they may see that I'd like them to stop speaking. Now this communicates that I don't want them to talk without me actually communicating to them. This could also be the, a polite way to ask them to be nice or to stop interrupting. It's polite because my gaze, me making eye contact with a person or people, isn't calling them out during a meeting. And some people may not realize that I'd like them to stop talking. And they may comply. Now, if it's a small meeting or if the people are being unusually loud and the entire group knows, my eye contact with them will be noticed. And I could easily simply say at that point, could you please quiet down? Now, eye behavior is not universal. There are differences on how people accept eye behavior. For instance, there are cultural differences in eye behavior. The amount of eye contact you can have with a person while you're speaking to them or while you're listening or even while you're standing close to them. For instance, Latin Americans, Southern Europeans, and Arabs focus directly on a person when they're speaking. Now, this may not be constant eye contact. They may occasionally glance away or glance at the person to accent what they're speaking about or show that they're interested. But there is a lot of eye contact during their conversation. On the other hand, Northern Europeans, Indian Pakistans, and Asians use peripheral vision while they're speaking to a person or listening to a person. They may not have direct gaze while they're talking. Their gaze may be not anywhere at all looking, for instance, looking at the floor when a superior is speaking to them, or they may just use their peripheral vision, like I am now, where I can see the camera, though I'm not gazing directly at it. This also comes up with cultural differences. Context, I'm sorry, contextual difference. For instance, if I'm being sincere and persuasive, I'm going to have a lot of eye contact. Or at least that's how a person will feel. A person will feel like I'm being more sincere and more persuasive if I maintain eye contact with the person I'm speaking to more often. Now, if I gaze away while I'm talking, people may feel like I'm not being honest, 
even though people who are used to not being honest may understand this and use their eye contact in order to make the other person feel they're telling the truth. There's also personality differences. For instance, the dominant, authoritative, or a person who wants to be included in a group will maintain more eye contact. People are more assertive. Now people who are less assertive or don't want to be included, they may not have as much eye contact. There's also differences in eye contact with gender. For instance, females will have more contact with their eyes than males. Now on the other hand, male speaking to male will have more eye contact than male speaking to female and female speaking to female will have more eye contact overall. A few things to review what we talked about in this video is the amount of eye contact we have is increased for something that we like. For people that we like or something that we want we'll have more contact with our eyes on it. Now we will avoid looking at things or people that we don't like or that we don't want to have interaction with. Our emotions can be seen in our eyes very easily. So we want to make sure if we are in a position where we don't want customers or employees to know our emotions, we need to keep our, mi our minds clear of emotions so we look like we're in a good mood. Deceptions can rarely be determined by eye contact. For instance, like we spoke about earlier, a seasoned liar can keep very good eye contact with you while they're talking. So it's hard to tell if a person's actually deceiving you or not. Though if you want to be seen as more truthful, you want to try to maintain eye contact. While you aren't necessarily lying, you want the person to feel like you're telling the truth and being more persuasive. So you want to try to maintain eye contact. Eye contact. Something that we didn't speak about in particular is the pupils. Our pupils will dilate when we see something that we like and our pupils will contract if we see something that we dislike. Now we spoke about averting our gaze. Sometimes averting gaze is confused than omitting our gaze. Averting our gaze is something we do in the elevator when we see a person acknowledge their existence and then look away or if we see something that we don't want or someone we don't want to speak to we will quickly avert our gaze now this is different than omitting our gaze because an omission of gaze means we never looked because we never thought to look now a person may believe that we are averting our gaze when we're simply omitting our gaze a person may think we're not interested in them because we're not looking at them intentionally even though that may not be the case we're simply not looking at them because we haven't looked at them. So you want to make sure that when a person walks in the room and a customer or whatnot, you want to look over at the customer, maybe even say hello, to acknowledge their existence. That way they won't believe that you're averting gaze from them. The references for this video is from our textbook by Hickson, McCroskey, and Richmond. Nonverbal Behavior in Interpersonal Relationships, the 7th edition, published in Boston, by Pearson. Thank you. My name is Brian Oliver.